G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. Well, some massive news for any of my Australian viewers, and being Australian myself, massive news for me. So Binance, world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, uh, finally launches in Australia. Now they have sort of uh, been in Australia for a while, but they had what we call Binance Lite. So it was basically just a site where we could uh, buy with Australian dollars uh, cryptocurrencies. It was just Bitcoin, I'm pretty sure, was all you could buy. And then you'd have to send it to whatever exchange you wanted to, Binance or wherever. But there was no reverse uh, gateway. So now, not only can you buy straight from Binance, but you can cash out from Binance. And that is great because the one thing we know about Binance is they have very, very low fees, particularly in comparison to some of the other Australian exchanges. And this is good for uh, Australians who are into the cryptocurrency because hopefully the other exchanges in Australia will now start to bring down their fees a little bit. So massive news. And as we can see here, as of today, Australian users can sign up to Binance to buy and sell cryptocurrency with the Australian dollar. There will be no fees for deposits or withdrawals and fees when you're using the uh, exchange platform, uh, they start from around sort of 0.1%. And also, if you're holding BNB, well, then you get a 25% discount. I've got some BNB myself, but I don't plan on using them anytime too soon. So this is great news. Uh, Binance, they have a lot more coins on offer generally, and their low, low fees is really what I think is really going to help uh, Binance grow uh, in the uh, Australian market. I mean, they have been anyway uh, since they... Uh, came out with Binance Lite. I know they've definitely done some business, but also something I found out is that uh, Binance, uh, they bought out some other Australian companies. Uh, and what did they buy out? Where is it? Um, sorry, I've lost it somewhere here. Uh, where is it? Binance Lite. Uh, that's right. I'm sure I'll find it later. But anyway, they bought out some other Australian crypto com uh, companies and what they've also done uh, is got in, uh, they're working with uh, news agencies across Australia basically. Uh, and so now you can buy cryptocurrencies through news agencies. And you have been for a while on, uh, I think it was Fluttershy was uh, one thing that they had. But again, the fees were quite expensive. Uh, they weren't very cheap. Uh, there it is. Uh, they uh, formed up with uh, Travel Bybit and also partner, uh, who partnered with Binance a couple of years ago. So that was an Australian company and they've uh, basically been, I don't know if you're going to say bought out by Binance, but really that's probably what's happened. They say partnered, but <laughs> Binance would have just bought them out really. Now, something I did find quite interesting. Uh, now, you know, take this with a bit of a grain of salt. But uh, Australia is regarded as a global leader in cryptocurrencies and, always, and has always been a really big market for the industry, said Binance CZ. Uh, he said, Aussies are forward thinking and accepting of the new technology and revolutionary change that crypto and blockchain can bring to finance and business opportunities. So that's pretty good of him to say it, but I mean, of course, he's going to say something uh, nice about us when he's opening up business. But uh, it's true. I, I, I think we would be one of the sort of more forward uh, countries in the world. And I actually have another blog that we're going to have a look at, another article that basically sort of says that. So anyway, that's awesome news for anyone who's Australian and particularly anyone who likes Binance. Uh, that is absolutely great news. Now we can go over to here. And have a look and say Aussie uh, exchanges partner with crypto tax firm uh, as ATO eyes traders. <laughs> so this can be good and bad news, I guess, depending on you know how you feel about taxes. I think it's definitely good that uh, they're making taxes easier. So basically, what's happened uh, is Coinly, I think, is what they've called. Uh, they are now working with Coinjar, Cointree, uh, and Swift FX, Swift FTX, which are Australian exchanges, and you can basically. Uh, hook it up with your API and get all your taxes, not your taxes done for you, but it's all basically put in a report form that you can then take to your uh, tax agent uh, and get them to do it. Or you can try and do it yourself, but uh, taxes are pretty hard and this basically just makes it easier. I think, you know, unless you really know your taxes, uh, go and see a tax agent. Don't try and do it yourself. It'll be too hard for the average punter, but, you know, that's not to say other people couldn't do it. But this is what I found. The ATO estimates that up to 1 million Australians are engaged in crypto trading activities, which is equating to 4% of our uh, country's entire population. 
That's not bad. 4% of Australians are into cryptocurrencies. Now, we need to remember cryptocurrency is very, very small worldwide period. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if 4% of the world's population was uh, into cryptocurrencies. My gut feeling is uh, it's not 4% of the world's population. I'm going to say it's probably more down about like maybe uh, 2 possibly 3% if we're lucky. But this goes to show that Australians are, as that article said, uh, what CZ said, you know, they're forward thinking and they're always looking for new and innovative ways uh, to make changes and things if they're out there. Uh, and obviously I'm one of them. I've been in crypto for a while now, so about three years. And I love it. I can just, I could see long ago when I first got into it, uh, the difference that it was going to make. Unfortunately, I didn't know the cycles well enough that I watched, you know, uh, I don't know, a couple of thousand dollars turn into literally only a couple of hundred dollars. But that couple of uh, thousand dollars is now back in profit already. So yeah, pretty happy with that. And you know, oi, 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 Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> Good on us for doing well and uh, being forward thinking in the crypto sphere. But Here's some uh, really uh, interesting news I found. So, uh, Bitcoin futures are absolutely pumping at the moment. So, International Exchange, and it's a subsid subsidiary of Backed Exchange, is reporting record numbers of trades for its monthly Bitcoin futures contracts as Bitcoin prices made a new high for the year. The institutional investing platform reported its highest ever figure for Bitcoin monthly futures on July 28th with 11,506 contracts. That's an increase of 85% over the previous record. So it's at record numbers. The move followed a surge in underlying assets price to a 2020 high of 11,400. Now only uh, July 29 back topped uh, the new record with 11,600 con contracts added. So they're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger uh, as it grows. So this is really good news for Bitcoin. Obviously more and more people are jumping onto it. You know, it's been legalized in uh, the, s the courts in America. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP have been deemed as money or a form of trade. And now the futures are just going through the roof. Big things are coming. You could just feel it. It's been brewing for a long time. You know, I only wish I had been able to get into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies earlier. I was just, yeah, I was very doubtful and skeptical at first when I was first told about it by my friend. And it took me weeks, and I mean weeks, of, you know, really researching it before I even dared to put any money into it. And even then, I was still really skeptical. It took me at least a month or so to kind of really wrap my head around it, maybe even a little bit more, two months to understand exactly what it was all about. Now, according to data from uh, SKU Analytics, BACT wasn't the only institutional exchange to break records this week. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange, so the CME, and we're going to have a look at that in a very, in very, in a minute, uh, which has far greater volumes than BACT, also recorded a surge in Bitcoin futures contracts on Monday. Daily volume topped 1.3 billion uh, while open interest, a measure of the total number of outstanding derivative contracts that have not been settled, also soared to 724 million. According to the CME data, 25,493 futures contracts were traded on Monday, and Tuesday's pre preliminary count was already over 20,000 at the time of writing. Yesterday also saw an uptick of Bitcoin option contracts on CME with over 1,100 traded, the highest number for the past 30 days. So the, the bull market has 100% started. It's here. I don't think there'd be any doubt that it is finally here. Now, what I want to have a do, have a, a, what I want to do is have a look at uh, the CME futures over here. So obviously futures are going through the roof. Everyone's getting involved and all the rest of it. But what we need to have do is have a look over here. So there's actually a gap here at about $9,600. Now 98% of the time, Bitcoin futures gaps fill. So this one hasn't filled at the moment, but that's not to say all of them fill, but this, wasn't, this one hasn't filled. So we just need to be mindful that there is a chance Bitcoin, it's currently sitting at 11,200, could come back down and revisit 9,600. So we're not quite out of the woods yet, but things are looking good. Let's jump over here to the US dollar chart. And as we can see, 
look at that move. And again, nine thousand sort of six hundred dollars is sitting back down sort of around here. Uh, sorry, nine thousand six hundred more back down around here before the move started. So there's a possibility we could come back, but I'm not sure because as we can see, we're starting to form a little bit of support here, support and resistance, but basically forming a platform. So that's what makes me uh, quite bullish at the moment. I I'm not sure we're going to come back and test the $9,600 anytime soon, but it's a definite possibility. And again, 98% of the time, which is high probability, uh, Bitcoin will uh, fill those gaps. So just something we need to keep an eye out for. Now, lastly, Synthetics founder says DeFi makes legacy fintech obsolete. Now that's a big call. And uh, if you go on and read the story, he basically talks about all the hindrances and things that are keeping uh, the D, uh, the regular fintech uh, legacy structures are back. There's all these hurdles and things that they have to jump over. Uh, and, you know, they haven't really been innovating for a really long time. And just everything's backed up. And it's, it's just a very hard sort of market to move around in. Now, D, uh, derivative markets is massive. It is an absolute behemoth. And I showed a chart a while ago of just how big the derivatives market is. That's one of the things that makes me super bullish about our uh, Synthetics Network token. I, I have a position and I plan on getting more, particularly now that Synthetics has, has, has a bit of a, a retracement when Bitcoin went on its pump. Uh, I think the, the market is absolutely massive, but there was uh, something down here that I was looking at. Yeah, DeFi adoption, it's still tiny. It's absolutely massive. So despite his op optimistic overlook for DeFi, Warwick noted that the DeFi space is still in its very early phases. Nothing that the popular browser extension MetaMask are uh, noting that the popular browser extension MetaMask has seen over 4 million downloads. Warwick, Warwick describes its adoption as amazing from a crypto perspective, but it is still tiny in terms of real-world engagement. So again, that's what makes me so bullish about cryptocurrencies uh, and particularly Synthetics Network. We haven't even scratched the service yet. Bitcoin has not even got to its old all-time high. That's when we're really going to start seeing the crazy stuff. Not immediately, not as soon as Bitcoin hits its old all-time high, which is about 19,700. We can just round it off to 20,000. Once Bitcoin hits 20,000, that's when it's really going to start to make like the regular news. The regular news aren't really talking about Bitcoin and crypto at the moment. It's still massively down. It's half the price basically of what it was once upon a time. So no one's talking about it. Watch what happens when Bitcoin hits that 20,000. It's going to start to be in the papers. It's going to start to be in the news. And it'll just be slowly at first because it'll be, oh, you know, Bitcoin hits its all-time high. Uh, it's old... Uh, previous all-time high and what will likely happen when it hits 20,000 is it'll have a bit of a sell-off it'll have a retracement so then it'll probably go quiet for a little while again and then it'll slowly start to tick back up and it'll get up above 20,000 and particularly once Bitcoin hits around that kind of $50,000 mark watch what starts to happen then it's gonna be getting more and more popular in the news more and more uh, Financial reports are going to start to talk about it, and more the 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 widely uh, the bigger ones, basically the one that more people read, not the tiny little ones, because tiny little uh, financial things are talking about crypto at the moment. But it's again, it's in its its tiny tiny little space at the moment. Once it starts to get into you know new price discovery, as I said, above twenty thousand. Once it hits fifty thousand, you watch what starts to happen. And if Bitcoin goes above the $100,000 mark, it will be straight out euphoria. You watch how fast that starts to rise. Once it hits that $100,000 mark, it could jump to 200, 300,000 very quickly. That's when it's in that euphoric phase and it's just really starting to go off its head. Once that kind of starts to happen, you might want to start thinking about taking some... Uh, some profits off the off the table. You might want to start, you know, selling uh, some of it. Now, not all of it. You can if you want, but definitely, 
I would start to sell even before it starts to get really crazy. Like once you see Bitcoin, you know, starting to jump up ten, fifteen thousand dollars or something like that in a day, it's probably time to take some profit. Now that's just my personal opinion, not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you uh, my perspective, having seen a bull run before. So some great news, particularly with Binance and all the rest of it uh, coming to Australia. That is great news for uh, everyone in Australia, particularly it'll lower the fees and hopefully it'll make the other exchanges in Australia do the same because we, we, we pay a bit of a premium here in Australia uh, for cryptocurrencies. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're still making some profits today and I'll see you next time.